んにちは。私はデカロです。私のチャンネルにようこそ。今日は鶏の唐揚げを作ります。Basically, today we're going to make Japanese fried chicken. Now, what's the difference between Japanese fried chicken and American, other kind of countries? It's really how you prep the chicken first. First of all, you are using chicken thighs. For this particular re recipe, I'm using a one and a half pound of chicken thighs. Now, that one and a half pounds is going to be a little bit less. Chicken thighs are a lot juicier compared to chicken breasts. That's why I'm using chicken thighs today. So, cutting off some of that fat is going to be less than one and a half pounds of chicken thighs. And also, with this recipe, I'm using one clove of grated garlic, one tablespoon of finely grated ginger, three tablespoons of soy sauce, one tablespoon of mirin. A quarter cup teaspoon of sesame oil, a quarter teaspoon of ground black pepper, a half teaspoon of white sugar, a quarter teaspoon of kosher salt. I omitted sake, which, with, if you were to use sake, you would use, you would use three tablespoons of sake. Now, that is a lot more liquid to help marinate everything else together, but I find that omitting sake. Or you could use white wine. I omitted that. It makes the flavor of the chicken a little bit more powerful. For the coating of this tori no karaage, use potato starch if you can. If you can find potato starch, fantastic. That's one of the best starches to use, in my opinion. I've tested other things, I've, I've done cornstarch. It made the color of the chicken breast or the chicken thighs a little bit lighter brown than I like. Karage, you want a, a golden, a golden brown type of color. Potato starch has a little bit more of that ability compared to cornstarch. I also have tried cornstarch mixed with flour to see if that would work, but flour is, let's use flour more for like the pork loins, the pork cutlets, like the katsudon or like. So let's look at. A little bit of history of karaage. Okay, so one thing for certain in the Japanese language, age means fried. The kara, it's unknown because kara is Chinese and it also means something different in Japanese. So there's two different interpretations of the sound kara. The Chinese origin of karaage means Chinese frying. There are two interpretations depending on the kanji used for the, the sound kara. Kara can be written which, in the Chinese way, which means Chinese frying. But then also, kara spelled in the Japanese form means empty. So you could say it's empty, empty fry. So the reason why I say tori no, tori is the Japanese word for bird, or in this case, chicken. So tori no karaage. Is fried chicken. It was the beginning of the Showa era in the period of Japanese history, which was、uh, the Emperor Showa ruled the country from December 1926 to January 1989. That karaage started becoming a lot more eaten. At the beginning of the Showa era, there was a big food shortage following the war, and the country began to open up more poultry farms. So, as a result of trial, trial and error, People were eating more chicken. Now, I couldn't find any like real history of why the Japanese use specific ingredients like the meeting, the sesame oil, and this and that, because the sesame oil is more of a Chinese type of flavor, though it's used quite often with Japanese as well. So they kind of intermix. The sake is what defines the Japanese version of the fried chicken. I, I, I can't really figure out except for the fact that. With Japanese culinary, you're always looking for balance. So, the salt combined with the sugar inside the, the marinade that I made, that's complementing each other. When I'm frying the karaage, I'm going to also complement it with like slices of lemon, maybe some cabbage, you know, add some color. You know, it, it looks boring if it's just white, like if you had white rice and just karaage with just golden brown. That's not,、uh, you know, let's, 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 let's add some color. Without further ado, let's go and fry up the karaage. So, the next step is to take the marinated chicken pieces and coat them with a layer of potato starch, putting it into a bowl、uh, 
uh, shaking off the excess potato starch and then putting it on a rack to sit and get ready for the fry. On the second batch, I'm going to go ahead and turn over these pieces. Because the bottom, look at that. Okay, so this is what the bottom's looking like right here. Let's see if I can pick that up. So that bottom part right there, it's getting uh, pretty brown. But the other side is looking more like this. Looking like that, looking like this. <laughs> so I'm just gonna flip them over about another minute and these, this set will be done. And here we go, look at this. Mm -mm 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 -mm. That's looking like some fried chicken there. But oh, just wait for that. Just the taste, the taste is what gets you. This would really go well, uh, like all fried chicken does, with uh, a, a light beer. I would probably do something like Sapporo or Kirin. But you can you can do a Dos Equis if you want or anything of that nature, S something light. Don't do like an IPA or anything like that. It's a little too heavy for this type of, this type of food. All right, a little shot over here of what the cook, the first round cook looks like. That's our raw, obviously. So we're gonna let that cook again for another four minutes. Now, when I was doing some studying up on the karaage and some of the history and all that, I found that this summer here, or this summer, starting in June, Japan is releasing a type of Pepsi flavor that is supposed to complement the oiliness of the karaage. It's a it's a clear liquid type of Pepsi. They've done the, those Pepsi clears before, but it has some kind of flavor that cleanses the palate, if you will. So there's actually two of the Pepsis that are being released in Japan. One's already been released, I believe it was in, well, it was earlier in 2022. And they're actually asking the consumer to pick which one better complements with the karaage. So if you don't want beer, try the Pepsi karaage. All right, and we're back. Oh, the karaage has been cooked for its first round. Looking nice, looking nice. Some of these are a little off color. I don't care for that, but that's all right because now we're going to double fry. So put these back in. I raise the temperature a little bit to, two, or to 370. So we're just gonna do a real quick, like, just refry, basically. Get it a little more brown color, especially down here, especially down here. There we go. Again, this is a quick moment of the cooking. So don't let anything distract you. Because you can burn very quickly. See, like this one right here, that's looking really good right there with that color. So we'll put that to the side. And you gotta remember, right when it comes out, it's not gonna be the color it's going to look like when it's rested. But, there we go. So I'm gonna do this for the rest of the karaage, which I've got over here. I made a lot, but that's because I'm going to share it with my my crew, basically, uh, my next my next trip. Because the last time I made this, the last crew, they thought it was fantastic. So I thought, you know what? Let me make it for the next crew. And I've flown with two of them before. The third, uh, the first officer I haven't flown with yet. But. Okay. I'll get this done and I'll see you in a bit. I need a plate. So there we go. I'm going to present my karage as best as possible. So I am going to add some cabbage like this. There we go. And I'm gonna add some lemon. Add a little color to the whole thing. Now I gotta see which piece I want to eat. This one looks like a good one. I like the way that turned out. There we 
go. And they could, and karage could be any shape. It could be like this, the long, long kind. You can see those more in the shops anyway. Sometimes they do them as nuggets like this, all right? Um, I prefer just basically this kind of size or this kind of size. So that's it, we're done. Now, let's go and eat. And there we go, my karage, Japanese, Fried chicken. <laughs> Tori no karage, if you will. Let's have a taste. All right, I added the lemons and the cabbage. Cabbage goes well, like I said, with the uh, oily food. But let's try this one right here. All right. There you go. Looks all right. Let's have a taste. Mmm. That is exactly what you're looking for. The garlic and the ginger are just spot on. You can feel you can feel and taste the garlic and the ginger. The soy sauce adds a little bit of a you know nice Japanese touch, if you will. And uh, man, this is this is fantastic. I love this kind of food. I want to try it a little bit with some lemon. See if lemon will change up the flavor there. The lemon adds a nice little kick to it. It, it makes it taste a little more uh, American, <laughs> so to speak, uh, just because it has that tartness. And that's not what we're looking for with the karage. So use the lemon as show, <laughs> cabbage to knock out some of that uh, oil, oily taste of the karage and you're good to go. You could probably put like some ponsu sauce on this, make it kick a little bit more, but quite honestly, you can just eat this the way it is. <laughs> That's it. Well, folks, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, go ahead and click that like button, click subscribe, click on the notification bell, let you know I came out with another video for y'all. See you next time.